Hello one and all, and welcome to Behind the Glass, your weekly automotive podcast hosted by two rather uninformed enthusiasts. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I'm Sam from the YouTube channel Seen Through Glass. I'm Tony from Gravelwood Car Sales. And you can watch us each week. We hope you enjoy the episode. Do you do you ever remember the the the, the you're a bit younger than me? Do you remember the paper form auto trader magazine? Uh, do you remember going to the shop and buying? No, no, oh, right. You I didn't that. do that I, 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 because magazines. I really only ever bought F one racing. Right. Don't forget the car thing came late to me. Right, I was all motorsport. Fair. So I I wasn't sitting at home flicking through. Car magazine. I would watch Top Gear. I wouldn't buy the magazine. Man, I can't read. No. <laughs> like, well, well, hold on. I can read better than you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't read. I don't read. Right. I like to look at the glossy pictures. Apart from the F1 racing mag. So yeah. So long story short, no. But uh, that was your bible, was it? Oh mate, like like literally, I'd go down there every Thursday. People would be reminiscing to this and thinking, flipping. Oh, I used to do the same thing. Mm. And you'd buy the Auto Trader book. And I even remember when I first become a motor dealer. Uh, well, no, it was before, actually, before I'd just become a motor dealer, but I was still working in the motor trade. And the auto trader man used to go around to the dealers and take photos of the cars. And wow. uh, and then he'd go back and un- upload the photos. But there must have been multiple, photo- photo- pho- oh, multiple photographers. No, sure. One for the whole country. It can't be <laughs> one. It- <laughs> Because that's what you it's were like Father Christmas. Yeah, yeah, literally. Because <laughs> you were like, the photo, the auto trader man would come around. I was like, yeah, there must have been multiple millions men. of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. there's millions of them. And, they, and then they created this book. Obviously, it used to be published. And what reminded me of it, I saw a clip on, uh, I think it was Instagram, and uh, that showing all the old cars and that, mm. and like old Scirocco's and Renault's and all the old cars at like 5995 and all that. And, well, sometimes you get people, they'll share old ads of Ferrari F40, 140 grand, yeah. you know, like Carrera GT, yeah. 200 grand and going, wow, how time to change. But that was a lot of money back then, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah. You know. It was a lot of money, but also don't forget, it was prior to a time where things did just depreciate. Like, you know, that, that's the other thing which we forget. It, mm. Things did just absolutely tank. And it's, did, it's yeah. you know, late 90s, early noughties there wasn't the same collector market that there is today, I don't think. You know, it was all for pre-war no. stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, the 60 stuff was doing okay. Yeah. But, you know, I remember clearly when I left my PR job and set up my PR consultancy, which was a disaster. Um, Let that go. I, <laughs> awful. <laughs> I was looking at buying a 993 911 and they were 15 to 20 grand. Yeah. 15 to 20 grand, you would struggle to get a 993 for less than 75 today, a decent one. Yeah, yeah. And there were like plenty to choose from yeah. for 15 to 20 grand. There's there's so many um, examples of it, you know, and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <clears throat> the reasons for that is one, one demand, a lot of people my age, maybe a little bit older, they they were all poster cars and they've earned some money and they've gone back and bought them, you know, and I saw a story the other day of a, a, a guy who'd, Bought his dream. I can't remember what car it was now, but it was a car of my era, and he'd worked his whole life yeah. for for this car because he'd. I mean, fair play, man. But when you when you're doing that, that's what it's all about. It's what it's all about. It's yeah. what it's all about. But yeah, as you say, that the collector market usually moves with the generations. Mm. So you know the the interest and the appetite for pre-war cars is now really reducing because uh, most people who are in a position to be collecting cars or buying cars don't have any real world experience of pre-war yeah. cars, you know, apart from maybe via their father or their grandfather. So that's why you're seeing this big up spike, especially in the, in the Japanese market. Mm. You know, uh, some of the stuff I was looking at the auction, which auction was it? Some of the auctions coming up just full of Japanese cars. Yeah, but because that's because the American, ma- American market as well. Of course, obviously. the Americans can now import them. Yeah. Um, but, but at the same time, even just here in Europe, the market is flying you yeah. know, for, 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 for the Japanese stuff. So, yeah. And that's because we all grew up, or my generation grew up, your generation grew up, Gran Turismo, and Need for Speed, mm. and these were the cars on the front covers. So yeah, for sure. That's what people want to go out and buy. Yeah, it's amazing how it, how, how it changes. And, and don't forget <clears throat> as well that, that cars are a huge tax break for an investment point of view. Oh yeah, it's you, an asset class. It's, it's an, an asset. investment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's no there's no tax on it. So um <clears throat> that's why that's also why prices have gone the way they've gone because 
the 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 the, the big money have all come in. Some of them don't even know anything about cars. Well, that's the. I would say that there's two. They're two different um, customer bases or two different collector bases. Yeah. You have the enthusiast, then you have literally just the the asset collector. Mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously, as cars have become an investable asset class and and really have given the returns that they have, you've got people coming in purely from a money making scheme. Yeah. They buy delivery mileage cars. They stick them away. They don't really know anything about the car apart from they're sold the key information, the key stats. Yeah. They're sitting on it for ten or fifteen years and then they're flipping it. Yeah. You have a hybrid of the two. I think savvy enthusiasts who are looking at cars that they can buy, that they want to enjoy, that they understand the the reasoning behind uh, with the aim to make money off. Yeah. And then you have just pure enthusiasts who end up buying the right thing at the right time and, yeah. and ride the wave. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's fascinating. See, I, in my world, I meet really a mixture of all of them. You know, of when course. I get to go and uh, meet these different collectors or, or, or owners, I get invited to drive things or go to sh- different shows. And uh, I, I cannot knock the pure asset class investor because we're all trying to make money. Mm. <laughs> like we're, you're kidding yourself. If you like, we're all trying to make money. Yeah. And if somebody came up to you and said, look, buy this thing. And in five years time, it's either going to be worth double the money or at least, you know, 30, 40, 20 or 30 percent. Yeah. Yeah. You go, hell yeah. Yeah. Um, it just happens to be that we love the things that these people are buying and we get upset that they're not being used or driven or yeah. enjoyed, but you, you can't knock it. So I, I'm never there to yeah, say... It's up to them what they do with their totally money once they're bought it. Yeah, yeah. If you don't want to drive it, don't drive it. A delivery mileage car is a delivery mileage car. Like, I get yeah. it at that point. What else are you going to do with it? You know, yeah. an enthusiast, I'd love the idea of an enthusiast going out and buying a delivery mileage McLaren F1 and then putting 10,000 miles on it, but so few people are going to do that because of the money that will be lost. Yeah. You know, the money that's required to get in. Yeah. So I yeah. know I know some people fast forwarding that, that are trying to do that with modern cars now. Yeah, of course. So of course. I, I know people that have got delivery mile GR Yaris's mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. even heard of a, a guy the other day that bought a um, Vorsprung uh, RS3. Modern. Oh, wow. Yeah. Never used it. Yeah, no, no. Just I mean, you've got to play the game, there. right? Well, 30 years. Yeah, you, you got, you got to play the game. It's just got to sit and, there forever, yeah. But that's the thing I think a lot of people in that world, auction world, investor world, are trying to figure out right now is is what, what do the next 10, 20, 30 years look like for the collector market? Because as I say, the, the pre-war stuff, even the, the 50s and 60s stuff, you know, the market is shrinking for that kind of stuff, mm. 1 million percent, because the big, big money guys... Crypto, not so much anymore, but still, people who are making a ton of money now in their late 30s, 40s, some are younger, are are buying, yeah, 90s and noughties cars. You saw that collection that blew up over Christmas, only appeared over Christmas that Tim went to film, um, which had like a Reventon, uh, a Singer, I can't remember what else was in the collection. But anyway, apparently a very young guy. Fair. Very young guy, he's been super successful. Hey, look at... Lee collection. Yeah, yeah. You know, in the grand scheme. And that's all modern cars. So if you're someone who's advised in the classic car world, you're probably thinking, oh God, how do I entice these guys to come and spend the money here? And there are still enough old boys and old gals that are, that are buying the sort of art pieces. Yeah. But less and less so. So you're right. There's a game to be played of, look, over the last five years, what are the cars that could in 30 40 years time fly and you've yeah. got I think you need you need to have kids around you to tell you right what are the 12 and 13 year olds freaking out about right now electric cars you you might not be wrong though yeah you know you might not be wrong everyone keeps telling us and I think I think 7 and 8 year olds are being educated to only care about and and see that's the what point my daughter the, she's that's how old she is yeah that's what she talked about so you should buy a mini electric <laughs> now and and not put a mile on it and leave it on charge for yeah. 30 years and then I'll in 30 years I'm going to have to replace the battery and it's not going to be worth anything <laughs> well done it is, it is fascinating though <laughs> not really because do combustion engine vehicles do any just become art physical bits of art that you put on walls you know people not very, in our lifetime yeah but you not in our lifetime too there, many there are there are already people doing it with things like 60s 911s even motorbikes you know uh, hanging cars on walls and stuff like it's not completely unheard of at this stage to right, treat that's 50 year old stuff then so another 50 years so i'm right not in our lifetime okay so i didn't mean would cars that are being made today 
become art. I meant in general, will, oh. will cars become more? Will the, I mean, collector, they already are. the collector scene become less about driving and more about art? I think that's already started, yeah, mate. Yeah, I think mean, that started yeah. a while ago. Yeah, people, people that are people that are giving a million quid for Carrera GTs and nearly two million quid for F forties and all that. Yeah, you're probably that's, right. That's it's, art, to, it's to look at and yeah, to, that's not to appreciate drive. the story. It's not to, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But God. You've, got, you've got Enzo's at nearly three million quid now. Yeah, that's like, a joke, that, isn't it? That, 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 that is not to drive and enjoy. No, no. no chance. What's going to happen with my challenge? Oh, do you know what? Do you know what, as well, when you reminded me about um, the Lee Collection? I'm not going to talk about the Lee Collection, but you reminded me about Australia. I've got a very good customer. Um, he's Australian. He watches the show, actually. Good bought, day. Good day. <laughs> um, I bought a car from him last week. And he told me a story the other day, which horrified me, by the way. Do you remember when we went to Sydney mm -hmm. and we went to that nice little lunch spot in the bay? Yeah. Nope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hold when, on. We, when we went to the National Park. Oh my god! Come what? on, mate. In Sydney, but when you when you drove the um, oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. We sorry sorry when we drove with the um, what's it called McLaren Elva and the black and series. the black series yeah, CLK yeah. black series yeah, yeah we yeah, went yeah. to that beautiful little yeah, yeah, bay yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry that was in the northern beaches yeah yeah fine yeah, yeah gone so uh, and I asked the waiters at the time and there's sharks in that bay in the bay yeah in the bay yeah, yeah and yeah. he said uh, well. But, but probably, and then one of them said, "No, don't be so stupid." Yeah, you, there's this charity where you swim to the island. Yeah, 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 yeah. But there's a woman got eaten there, <laughs> had her leg off last week, <laughs> a week before, whenever. Mate, that's terrifying. <laughs> that was a lovely little inviting bay. You go and you get eaten. But I told you, Vicky went and swam in that bay. That's not. And funny. she was on a paddle board. <laughs> This is the, one of my favourite stories. Because we were staying there because my godmother used to have a house in that bay. And it was like, you could paddle down to the cafe to, for lunch. So Vicky was like, I'm going to go on the paddleboard. And on the way back, these kids, local kids, there's a stingray underneath you. There's a stingray underneath you. So Vicky started having a panic attack. Like, she's like, oh my God, what do I do? Like, with the stingray. And she couldn't paddleboard. And they're going to get the stingray. It's going to get you. And she couldn't see it. So she's looking around going, where's the freaking stingray? Isn't that what killed Steve Irwin? And she never worked out whether they were trolling her or not. But now, based on your story, they probably weren't. They were probably just telling the truth. There probably was a stingray ready to eat Vicky. Well, they sting you. Sting Vicky. Well, they don't eat you. Well, who knows? But this is a shark, mate. I yeah. mean, I know a stingray killed Steve Irwin, yeah. bless him. But This woman only lost her leg. Steve's dead. Well, yeah, he is. But, but it was an accident. You know what I mean? I think the shark biting the leg was an accident as well. No, mate. It's not funny. And, and I saw a clip the other day of one right in Australia, right on the on the beach trying to get another fish. I mean, you literally go in the sea, you're dead. I'm not going in there, mate. I told you. Mate, do you live in Australia? No, luckily. Are you going back? I might have to. <laughs> <laughs> are we, I think, go, are we going think, back? I think calm down. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. Calm down with your shark fears. All right. uh, anyway, uh, exciting news, I guess, for us, but potentially bad news for you. Um, the Portugal tour sold out. Sold out. <laughs> I mean, like... Three days. I mean, literally, gone. Uh, so we have 10 very interesting uh, cars signed up. Very lovely people. What, they're all Porsches? I mean, literally, I think like 70% <laughs> of them are Porsches, which yeah. is a bit of a joke. We've been going back and think, have you got anything else you might want to bring? Because yeah. <laughs> this has become a Porsche tour. Yeah. But yeah, no joke, uh, like literally 70% of them are Porsche GT cars. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a real nice variety, some super nice people. We're very, very excited. Uh, we are running a, a, a waiting list of which there's already, I think about six or seven people signed up, uh, uh, properly signed up for the waiting list. So if you are desperately interested and intrigued, you can still get in touch and inquire about the waiting list. But if I'm honest... It's almost chapter closed with the Portugal tour. Um, we will be announcing tour number two, mm -hmm. the September slash maybe October uh, event, probably as soon as that event ends. So so the, uh, the April, week commencing the 15th of April, uh, once that tour's over, we'll probably then announce tour number two. Yeah. So stay tuned for those of you that have missed out or those of you that are, uh, are looking forward to doing something a little bit different to that. Um, yeah, more details to come around April time of tour number two but thank you for the support thank you for the inquiries we're quite excited aren't we we're very yeah, excited mate yeah. as well yeah a, um, a, I can't wait to be fair it's a new era I don't know what I keep glass. like I keep debating what car to take oh, oh. no because like but you're the crew car mate I so you, understand you gotta that. you gotta keep that in mind that you're, you're very much you know you're we both of us we're playing a support role we to our attendees so that they can have the maximum 
experience. Yeah, so I probably it's not about ta- us having no, the maximum experience. I understand that. You don't have to reveal anything, by the way. I'm not going to, because I still don't know what car I'm going to yeah. do. <laughs> I have. I can take a practical car or a less practical car, basically. You know, uh, I'm leaning towards the practical car. I think you need to take the practical car. I agree. All will be revealed soon. We will be revealing beforehand what cars Tony and I are taking. Mine will be less of a surprise. Yours, maybe. I know. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, knows? plenty more on that. And and as we mentioned last week, I'll be doing main channel content. There'll be podcast content. So uh, you'll still be able to come along with us virtually or digitally uh, on that tour. <laughs> Now, I wanted to update you because last week I went to drive the new Range Rover Sport P635 SV First Edition. Catch- so that's the new SVR, basically. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Catchy name, isn't it? Yeah, I actually good. don't know how we'll refer to it. Do we call it the new SV or it's the SV or the P635? Because what's the Defender V8 is officially called the P something something something, isn't it? We just all call it the Defender V8. Well, yeah, that's what I, that's what it is. No? So yeah, so I think I think we just call it the Range Rover Sport SV, or just the really expensive Range Rover Sport. Well, yeah, <laughs> really expensive. So we come back to that, I guess. I think we got it. Um, how how intrigued are you or were you about that car? Never that or am. Why? Because what's wrong with the normal one? And quite a lot, if I'm honest. How much time have you spent in the new Range Rover Sport? A bit of time. I've had about three in stock. Yeah, have you driven them around? And yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're underwhelming. Well, like all modern cars, mate. No, I disagree. They're all underwhelming. I think the big Range Rover is overwhelming. I think the yeah, newest generation big Range Rover is superb. Yeah. Very hard to knock apart from the size. That Range Rover Sport, I think, lost a lot of its identity. It blurred into Velar slash Big Range Rover. It became a lot more serious. It was very plush. It didn't kind of seem as appealing. Price-wise, got a lot close to the Big Range Rover. I don't know. I just... My dad had those Range Rover Sports for years and years and years. There was always a charm to them. I always enjoyed driving his car. I always enjoyed getting in his car. I thought they looked cool. They looked different to the big cars. Then that new one came out, and it just all got a bit blurred and messy and i spent six weeks with one that p uh, p535 yeah, the, the, yeah. the larry v8 year, yeah yeah uh, in the south of france i just kind of was a bit like <sighs> just a bit cumbersome like remember i did that drive down and i text you being like i've never been more comfortable on a drive down yeah. to monaco and i've never been more bored like yeah. it just didn't do much for me i can probably sum this up for you go on i can probably help you out here so the old car kind of as expensive as it was, kind of punched above its weight, essentially, compared to the old Vogue. So they'd be closer together, but it was still quite a lot cheaper. And actually, it drove better. Uh, Not down the road better, but dynamically, it Mm -hmm, drove a lot mm -hmm. better. Whereas the, the, the price of the new car, as good as it is, is really close to the Vogue, but the Vogue is leagues ahead. That There you go. That's exactly what it is. And obviously my experience with the car in the South of France meant a lot of twisty, narrow roads up on cliffs and down. And so dynamically I needed the car to not be as wafty as it was. But yeah, it's, it's just, it's just lost. So for me, there was room for improvement. I did not think the room for improvement was with an SV badge or SVR badge. But I think it's a perfectly good car, mate. Me. The sport. The normal sport. Yeah, you know, I would, I've, we've said this before, I would definitely have the Vogue over the Sport. Well, there you go. Whereas probably in the old car, I would have had the Sport over the Vogue, essentially. My point is proven then. Yeah, yeah, but what I'm saying is, that still doesn't mean it's not a good car yeah, in Oh, class. yeah. Oh, it, no, no, it, no. It, uh, you know, when you consider, they have dropped in value quite a lot. Especially when you compare it with the old car. The old car held its money for a lot longer um, than than the newer car, so the new the newer car was wasn't really overs ever. But there was a there was a small period of time where it was, and that might be a moment in time. But but the uh, the the older shaped car, there was like a a, a point there was like a two year wait for yeah, them. Yeah. I mean, you literally couldn't get them. I I I, I agree with you. It's a fantastic car. Mm. It just excites excited me less or excites yeah. me less i thought the 
hybrid was spectacular that I drove in Spain during the launch. I know Harry Metcalf just went through all the finance on it and the hybrid was a lot more, is, is a lot more expensive to own and run and buy and things like that. So he went with the diesel. But anyway, long story short, what I'm trying to get on to <laughs> is I thought there was room for improvement. Yeah. And now I would not buy any other range of a sport except the SV. Bear with me. Let's not get onto the price. <laughs> bear, bear with me because, okay, performance wise, who sort of really cares? Because I'm still of that mindset of who needs a super SUV. Like I'm still Nearly kind of, ton. I'm still kind of anti the super SUV thing. No. They're so impressive, but I'm like, how often do you drive an SUV like that? Mm. Even Euros, Turbo GT, like all of these things. I'm like, how often? Are you getting an SUV and going for a blast on an Alps road or waking up on a Sunday morning going, I'm going to go for a nice little drive in my SUV? Now, the problem is, mate, as well, there's so many other cars you could have that, all right, they're not SUVs, but just in general, there's so many other cars you could have for loads cheaper that would be better. Well, you could still do, you could do the two cars. You could still have a fast four-seater saloon and a practical SUV yeah, for yeah. the money of a super SUV. So yeah, anyway, yeah. long story short, um, I struggle with that. But... <laughs> So the performance is very, very, very impressive in terms of uh, 0-60s and horsepower. It's that BMW, it's the M5 engine, yeah, essentially. Yeah. And it feels a bit M5 -y. Turned up as well, right? Turned up, yeah. Mm. So it's like nearly 640 horsepower. Yeah, yeah. Um, the thing that is mind-boggling about this car, they're calling it 6D Dynamics. Mm. It has the, it's like the dual damper setup, mm. essentially, that McLaren uses. Mm. It makes the ride unbelievable because... Turned down in everyday mode, it is incredibly comfortable. Mm. It's as a Range Rover should be, mm. and it's tighter than the standard car. It, it actually behaves better on a road, in a city, in a twisty road. Like it is in cover mode, everything is just a little bit more, less wafty, less, oh, doesn't feel so heavy to turn through the bends. Turn it up into SV mode. Holy crap, mate. It, like I, I just knocked super SUVs, it's unbelievably accomplished. Fair. As good as any of those fast things. I said, in the video, I said that it reminded me in terms of the way it eats up the bumps of the Pura Sangue because of the speed you can carry over a bump. I think it's less brittle than a Urus Performante. Turbo GT, I think I drove on a very, Cayenne Turbo GT drove on a very smooth road, so I can't quite remember, but it is very, very... RSQ8? I think it's better than an RSQ8. Fair. It's super, super impressive. Mm -hmm. Actually enjoyable to drive. You've got to turn traction off. Most important thing, you have to turn traction off. Obviously, it literally doesn't let you go anywhere. Um, super, super impressive on a very tight and twisty road. Mm -hmm. very, like genuinely, the front end is almost a bit too eager at times. The steering. And it's got rear made, steering, that's why. Well, no, but the standard car has rear steering, or you can option rear okay. steering on the standard car. It, it's not like they've tightened up the steering rack massively. So, so sorry, the steering re ratio. So it just is almost too direct. It's almost too, the inputs. A lot of the time you'd get to the corner and the front end would go and you'd feel the weight and the rest of the car being like, no, oh, mate, I can't follow. No, it's, but it's not, no. it, it, it isn't like, it's not a frightening car to drive. It's all very progressive. It's very enjoyable. It's very easy. It, I, I see you're desperate to not like or be impressed. It's it is very good, mate. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm not going to say anything because I've not. I've not driven it, and I'm not driven it at any sort of speed or pace. But what you're describing, <clears throat> I get, and I respect your professional opinion, obviously. Um, but I, I I can't compute or comprehend in my head that really when you show it a corner at real speed or pace that it won't be that good. I understand. You drive it on the road oh, as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, only on the road. I don't, oh, I don't go anywhere near the track. On track. What's the point of going on the track in an SUV? Well, I agree, but but there was a there was a there was a. Everyone went on track. I was oh, like, fair. what's the point? No, that, that I agree. The, I the agree international launch was going on track. I was like, why am I going on track in an SUV? I I agree with you, but that's what I'm saying. That these manufacturers now, you know, that they, they, they'll put a press thing out for it to go on track. But, but no. I, no that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, I agree with you. Like, Chug why? On. Yep. <laughs> Do you know what I, mean? I only drove on the road. I did 600 kilometers in it. I did 600 kilometers. I sat on the motorway the entire way up to Lisbon. I did 270 kilometers on the motorway. Mm. Perfect. As a Range Rover Sport should be. Perfect. Loads of music. 
all the adap- all the cr- adaptive cruise control. Lovely tech. Like, perfect. Like yeah, great. Yeah. Lovely place to sit. Got into town. Lovely, maneuverable, yeah. easy, totally fine. Yeah. Great. Yeah. On the way back, I went avoid motorways. Had an absolute blast. Lovely. Had an absolute blast. And and so, of course, mate, I'm not saying for a second that the car is not big and heavy and desperate to understeer and all of these things. I'm never, ever going to deny that that's the fact. But it hit its weight perfectly, right? It it it, it controlled its weight Fair. perfectly. It didn't hide its weight. It's <laughs> a two and a half ton plus. Like, <laughs> At least. But, it, but it controlled it very right, well. Okay, good. It didn't ever, apart from if you leave traction on, if you leave traction on, it despises going fast. Yeah. But if you turn the traction off or just dial it back into the track setting, it, it l- l- lets itself be driven fast, as any of these super SUVs do. Well, my M3 say, is the same. Yeah. Okay, so, ha <laughs> For like- me, mate, that is the, they are super close. Right. As the perfect, sporty, all-round, practical daily car, for me, it'd be between Sport SV and the M3 Touring in terms of they are very dynamically similar. Of course, the M3 is a lot more dynamically in tune, but yeah. you still, it's got that similar vibe yeah, to you, it. Yeah, you can see similarities, fair. Problem is, the SV is twice the money. Well, and this is, this was going to, this was literally why you were talking. I was literally thinking in my head, what's wrong with a 60 grand M5? Uh, that, I mean, <laughs> and, and honestly, yeah, that is the point because yeah. it's very, very good. And of course, you know, even if you take new car for new car, the M3 Touring it is it nowhere near as plush Mm-mm. as the Range Rover. The Mm-mm. badge is different. Everything about it. People like the SUV vibe. Like I get it. Mm-mm. But my other problem with that is because the sport has blurred that line, it's not impactful enough. Mm. The old SVR was so leery. It was so in your face, no matter oh, where you mate. saw it, like the noise, the big gills in the bonnet, like yeah, everything yeah, about yeah. it was like, rah! Yeah. This one is, I mean, okay, fine. In the first edition with that paint and the, lime green calibers and stuff like it's it's doing its best to be in your face but it's still super subtle yeah i get out a few a few times and be like yeah yeah so and probably super quiet as well right Eng- yeah engineered yeah. noise inside it's engineered the, noise inside whereas yeah. the svr really is a i think they're unbelievable them cars mm. now svr mm-hmm. for for 60 grand for yeah. a three-year-old one yeah. i mean what a car and that so for me this is where it came down to i the thing that i was doing is like <laughs> You don't need to go that fast in that car. You don't. It's in, so impressive that it can. But mm. what you actually gain by their desire to make the car that capable of uh, is the slow speed gains. Do you think it's dynamically as good as like an RS6? Yes. I don't know if it's better. Because an RS- I hated driving the RS6 it, fast. Because it's... It, when you start showing that car some corners and really giving it stick, the RS6, it, it's quite cumbersome. Yeah. And rem- I, reminds you a little bit of an SUV, to yeah. be fair, because it's big and heavy and understeery. All the things the M3 Touring isn't, by the way, which is why it's dynamically loads better than an RS6. That's why I say, do you think it's... You no, know. I, I, I would prefer to drive... The SV over an RS6 on a twisty road. Fair. If you put if you put me on the top of the Transfer Garrison, well that and tells gave you me the something. two, I yeah. get in the SV. Yeah, that tells you something. Um, it's a really good car, but you just who is buying it for what is a hundred and eighty grand plus? Well, so that it starts supposedly the first edition, which is theoretically sold out. But call your Range Rover dealer because I doubt it is. Um, it's one hundred and seventy one grand. Huh. But then to get the Super spec with the carbon wheels, lol, and the carbon ceramics, lol. Yeah. It's an extra fourteen <laughs> grand, so you're up at one hundred and eighty-five for the car that I drove. It was one hundred and eighty-five. Yeah, you. I mean, it's you know DBX seven hundred seven, beyond Cayenne Turbo GT. Not that you can get them anymore. DBX seven hundred seven is more than that, no? It's like one hundred ninety something. So it's right. another five or six. Right, but yeah. I mean, as much as we slate that car, it's a bloody Aston Martin. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, like, I agree, mate. Uh, I that for me is like what well, you've just. Hey, this theoretically sold out, which from a PR point of view is half the job done. That's a lie. <laughs> because who's actually, bu- like, what? <laughs> what? For uh, a Range Rover Sport, 185. I've had two customers in the last month that have ordered them and asked me if I should take them because it's a lot of money. Mm. And uh, they've cancelled both of them. Both of them cancelled. I look, 
hey, I'm the biggest JLR fanboy in the world. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I obviously lean more towards Jaguar, but I love a Range Rover product. As I say, those big Range Rovers, I would have in a heartbeat if I had the money and the space. Yeah. The sport is very good. I just didn't like it as much. But across the board, I remember mum's had a vote. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that's almost, I'm like target demographic. Yeah. But you've just ruined it with that price tag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we know Range Rover Sport new one has been expensive anyway. But even if it was 150, you'd be like, oh, okay, I kind of get it. Theoretically, it's limited, blah, 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 blah. But 185, it just annoys me. But it I, just annoys I me. I agree. And the, 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 the older shape SVR, obviously this new one's a better car. By the sounds of being quite a lot better. Yeah, miles better. Yeah, I would yeah, say. yeah. But well, the interior for a start, without, yeah, before yeah. you even turn a key. But that old car was hundred grand, mm, hundred and five, mm. hundred and ten. If you got a Larry one, double so the money almost. Nearly double the money. I mean, it's a little bit of a yeah. pee take when you think about it, really. And yeah. actually, like, what? <laughs> What does it, listening to you for five minutes, what does it actually really compete with? Like, for mon- for the money, like, you'd have, probably have the Porsche mm-hmm. over over it. I'd say it's, that that's the most appropriate rival because they're equally as bland. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Like, like, that like Porsche GT is very good though, it's right? It's unbelievably good, yeah. but it's the same thing where only the nerds know it's a turbo GT. Yeah. To everyone else, it's just a Cayenne. Yeah. And it's going to be the same with that Range Rover Sport yeah. SV. Yeah. Most people it's a Range Rover. Yeah. But go on, what else would you compare it with or rival it with? Well, if, you, if, you're, if you're going money, you have to compare it with the big, hit, big hitters as well, like, mm. like an Urus, mm. like the 707. Mm-hmm. And it's not, it's not that brand to command that money. Mm-hmm. I know, uh, I know an Urus Performante or an Urus S. They are more once they've been specced. But list for list, there's not a great deal of difference between the two. And then obviously you go extras and they start piling up. Seven oh seven the same. But we all know I'm not the biggest Aston fan. But I'd have the. 707. I know, that's, like, that's why I couldn't believe I was saying the same <laughs> thing. I'm like, I hate that. I hate the TPX. But I would pick it in yeah. price for price. If yeah, I, was, I agree. And, but the, for me, the big resolution is the 60 dynamics, all the improvements have made the range of a sport better at lower speeds and in everyday situations. At which point, if you're thinking of spending that much just to get a better range of a sport, Buy the big Range Rover. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. unless you really think I'm going to buy this SV to go on a, hey, come on the Portugal tour in a Range Rover Sport SV, or you're going to do track days at Silverstone every other, uh, other month. Firstly, you're buying the wrong car for both Full situations. Stop. But long story short, then just go and buy the big Range Rover. So mm. again, like it's just, oh, I was so annoyed because I loved it. Mm. And I was like, I just would have one of these. I mm. would, mate, I would hands down have one if it was a hundred and... 10 or 15 grand I would be like yeah cool I'm gonna do it and I would have one over an M3 Touring I would have one over an M3 Touring if it was similarly pri- all of those things but I would never have one at 185 grand even if I won the Euro Millions I'm not buying one mm. so that's it why was I never, left, it was I never gonna frustrated. be M- it was never gonna be M3 Touring money is it? It's no not, no no, you know, no. it was not... never gonna be M3 Touring money but do you see what I mean like it's, <clears throat> if, it, if, if the price felt more appropriate mm. it feels disproportionately expensive yeah yeah and that's what's frustrating about it. But, you know, if you, if you have decided, if you're wealthy enough to not care and you've got one coming, boy, will you be happy. Yeah. It is a fantastic bit of kit. Yeah, fair. It is a fantastic yeah. bit of kit. But there's nothing wrong with a Range Rover, full stop, yeah. for 90% of what you're going to use it for. Yeah, probably. But it, uh, anyway, should we move on? Yeah. Because it's time for Starkwatch. Starkwatch, we're going to check out some stuff that we've seen. Got to get that theme tune sorted out. Uh, now I need, your, I need your help, Tony. Okay. <laughs> you have got to stop me from buying a car. What's that? So. <laughs> oh, mate, I've just seen it. <laughs> I'm in so oh, much trouble here, Tony. I'm I in can't, so... mate. I actually don't know how I ended up in this position. But you know, like, I just love cruising auto trade and car sales. And I've got this long, you know, months ahead. I've got to... Anyway, who cares? This is a... Gen 1.5, 2016, Porsche Panamera, Turbo S. Currently listed for sales at Magari Automotive. Have you heard of that? I've never heard of them. Magari Automotive. Nope. Um, 
I mean, where do I start with the good news? Firstly, Voodoo Blue. Good. It's a PTS, basically. Yeah. It's got lovely wheels, ceramics, carbon ceramics. Yeah. Loads of other ice options. 22,000 miles. Right. Sunroof. Yep. 54,000 pounds. Okay. Why can I not buy it? Because it's a pile of shit. No! May I... Ad- <laughs> like, I literally... I, obs- I've, I have so nearly called these people about four times. I obviously would need it to be inspected, but I think they're somewhere like in Plymouth and there's there's like a Porsche dealer there. So I was like, okay, cool. I'll just get the 111 point inspection. Yeah. Yeah. Like, make sure... Ceramics are the big thing because they're going to be 10 grand to replace. So I yeah. need to make sure the ceramics got life. Um, this is the 1.5, 26 in car, so bore scoring and things like that, really not that much of an issue. The turbos had to, had a recourse, I've got to check those. Air suspension needs to be checked. But apart from that, like, mate, what a stunner, what a car, voodoo blue. You've got way too much money. <laughs> I mean, that that's 55 grand and 55 grand a year to maintain. No, it's not. No, it's not. I've read so many buyer's guides. These are not expensive cars to run. These are not Panameras compared to Cayenne and all things like that, especially if they're well looked after, if they have the right recalls, there is not a ton of stuff that goes wrong. Servicing, all things like that, they are not, compared to some of the crap I look at, these are not expensive to run, mate. All right, off you go then. And let me know how you get on in two years. And also, let me know how you get on when you want to come out of it, because I don't want it. I will not be able to sell blue. it. Yeah, yeah, for that reason. <laughs> I, I will not be able to sell it for you. It'll sit around for a year before the next person <laughs> mad enough to part with any money. And and it'd be worth 25 grand. The thing is, I know you're right. And this is the problem. So the reason I haven't called these people, lovely Magari Automotive, I'm sorry for... Ruining well, your yeah, day. Ruining your day. <laughs> um, we sure it's a nice example. I think it's a fantastic example. I think yeah. it's the best example out there by a country mile. And yeah. I, I want it. But the thing is, I, I know you're right. It's the most expensive, whatever that generation Panamera is, by a country mm. mile. Mm. Um, it's a quirky spec. Mm. It's got the ceramics, so it's expensive. Like, there's all the things about it. Like, And you're right. I don't know how long they've had it for sale, but it's not going to be a car that's going to be easy to move because for that money as well, you can get the the latest generation. You can get the estate version and, you know, you can get the newer generation car. Yeah. Oh, but I, I just think it's so cool, mate. I think it's so cool, mainly because of the spec. Like, the, it's probably too low miles for me because, like, that's almost like borderline collector miles. 2016, 22,000 miles. Like, that's... You know, I'm going to go and put 10,000 miles on it pretty quickly. Well, who's going to collect it? The dealer that stocks it? Because no one... I mean, honestly, oh, mate, so please. Cool. It's so cool, though. I could just take a punt. Like, I'd just be like, oh, I'm just going you wild. Go. You know, like all the, look at all those American YouTubers. They buy absolute piles of crap and they make loads of content on it and yeah, it doesn't yeah. seem to affect them. Okay. Off you go, then. I know I shouldn't, though. <laughs> I know it's an awful financial decision. I don't think from a maintenance <laughs> point of view... But I just love it. I just think it's so cool. And actually... You're going to get a bill, mate. Maybe I'll get a bill, but I'm You're not going to get a Chan Stradali bill. I'm not going to get, get a bit... I'd have to get it inspected. I'd have to... The, for me, the biggest bill is the ceramics. If they turn around and say the ceramics are needing... Repl- then I'm never getting near that car. Mm. But... The if suspension the, lets go. Well, no, but they, but they don't... If, I mean, low mileage is a bit worrying because it suggests it's been sitting around quite a lot. That's when the suspension lets go. But they don't just let go of the suspension. It's according to all the buyer's guides and reviews. It's if the cars sit around for a long time or if they have faults and it's a repressurizing of the system or at most to replace the whole system, two grand. Oh, good. Two grand. Oh, lovely. That's what I mean. You've got too much money. <laughs> just literally, it's two grand. <laughs> no, but on, a fif- on a 55 grand car, it's a bill, but mate, I just paid five grand to just change some bolts on the Challenge for Darling. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm kind of used to big bills. Yeah, but it's all right to have one big bill. But when you've got two or three cars and they start commanding bills, it's not funny. You're literally going to be... Cl- I could be like, well, you know, I'm a YouTuber. Like, I to make content on it. Because that's what those Americans do. It really annoys me. All the Americans, they've got like 50 cars. And they're all shit pieces. And they all work on them endlessly. And then they and they seem fine. I'm we like, just copying Matt Armstrong. No, no. Matt does something amazing. He buys wrecks and rebuilds them and makes... That's that unbelievable. No, but like... <laughs> It's not a wreck. Yes. It's not a wreck. It's 22,000 miles, <laughs> mate. It's you to pick up on it's, that. It's perfect. Like, it's, <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's oh, got some nice okay. light on the photos. Someone else go and buy this car, please, to stop me from making what will. I know, because you're right. 
I've also never really liked Panamera, but I love this. Um, you're right that in six months' time, I'm going to be like, why did I buy this Panamera? And then I literally, I'm going to really struggle to come out of it. Mm. So somebody else go and buy it. And you have to think about these things. Shout out Magari Automotive for taking yeah. some fantastic photos of that. I may, I'm not saying no. I'm not saying no just yet. I'm going to call them this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your stock watch this week, mate? What are you shouting um, out? Actually, I'm going to go... this is nice. Go yeah. Um, 296. 296, a European prestige. Yeah. Black car, very you. Yeah. Listed at two... Have we not done a 296 before? Listed at 230. Didn't we do an F8 or something? What did we do? No, we done... Um, did we do a Pista? Oh, yeah, Pista. Yeah. Fine. What, 296? You're just Ferrari obsessed. No, I just... Um, uh, these is that jump out that cheap? Yes. These jump out at me because six months ago or a year ago, they're three hundred odd grand. What what are, what's the list price on a two nine six? Oh, you spec one up. What's the list price on two? Uh mine was three oh eight. No. Yeah, it was, yeah. With, oh wow. With some options. Oh fair. So <laughs> take the dealer mark. I mean there's a hundred grand. Two thousand miles on the clock, this one here. Yeah. So black on black on black. What else has it got? It's a hundred grand saving. I mean Let's be honest, it's not going to do that again. It's not going to lose another 100 grand. <laughs> it's not going to be 129 grand, mate, that car. No, no but it could be 175, 180. Well, all right. Well, so can, so can everything else. Not my Panamera. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, 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 hold on a minute. It could, actually. <laughs> oh, I want that car so bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> mate, okay. uh, that, they are, there's a lot of them online. That, that, I, I think... When they get, they'll get to 199 at some point soon, in the next year or so, I would have thought. That's going to be unbelievable car at 199. 200 grand for that. What's happening to Ferrari, mate? They've what's lost the plot, mate. What's happening to Ferrari used values? Mate, this is insane because this is an incredible car. Yeah. Like a spectacular car. Yeah. The, and I know people are going to say, oh, yeah, that, it's because it's got a V6 in it. It's because it's hybrid. No one wants it. We know the truth is, no one wants it because they bought it to get a Pura Sangue or to get a two uh, an SF ninety yeah yeah, yeah. extra Dali yeah. or to be consideration for we don't let's not forget the new laugh is coming mm -hmm. probably at the end of this year. Oh, they There's, wanted a convertible and that to buy the coupe as well. It, it's it's playing the game. Yeah, is now playing out on the used market because you know I say you are you are mad if you don't think that that is a fantastic car. And and look at any single person who's driven that car, journalist, collector, but it is a fantastic car. Is there a better is there a better modern supercar on the market? I haven't driven 750S yet. Oh, I think it's gotta be one of the best. It it's, has to be. It's got it's modern. I mean like when I say modern, I mean in the yeah. last year or two release. Yeah, yeah. It's got it's gotta be What's better than it? I don't know. Yeah, I, I, agree. I don't know. It's a fantastic car, and you're right. Therefore, at two hundred grand, fifty of them online, fifty. But a Ferrari, do Ferrari care about this? Because no. does this not diminish brand value a little bit? They used to care. I don't think they care anymore because they floated, didn't they? It's all shareholders. Don't give a toss anymore. But I think it does. I think the minute you can start buying Ferraris cheaper than Lambos, McLarens, Porsches, etc. It, it ruins the brand a bit. It opens up the Ferrari brand itself to all the people that they're trying to, you know, uh, sorry, sir, no cars are available. You know, you walk in saying, hi, I want to order a thing. Well, it's a five-year wait. Well, fine, I'll just go to your forecourt next door and buy yeah. one for 150 grand less. Like, But by the way, while we compare, because we should compare, none of the other mid-engine Ferrari supercars have ever dumped that money in the first mm. year, mm. ever. Well, and I can't think of it. F8s are still more, as we spoke about in we, recent episodes. We done, that's what I mean. We've done a comparison. That's why, that's why we've done a comparison. They were what, the similar money. What's a 458 these days? Because they've been stupid. A, a good one will still be 150, 160. For a good one with low mileage. I'm going to find... I'm going to do... This is just me being silly for a second. It's similar to 488 money. A good 488 is 150, 160. I want to see one. what the most expensive 458 is. Just for bands. Oh, mate, I bet it's 180, 200 grand. But oh. there'd be someone out there deluded. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so it's annoying. It's all the specialities. I don't want this. Uh, okay, let's do coupe. Hold on a sec. Body type. Coupe. There will be, be, be one, between 180 and 200. Italia. For Boom. an old knocker. Here we go. 
One thousand mile. Yep. Four five eight coupe. Yep. One eight five. There you go. What a load of old rubbish. <laughs> and then you've got a couple. Okay, a, a main dealer. Eight thousand mile car. One hundred and sixty. No. Oh. So the stupid part is going to be you're going to get to a point where very soon a a a fifteen year old. Four five eight, mm. Mm. close to a fifteen year four four eight is going to be about twenty grand less than a two nine six. Yeah, and everyone's like, "Well, that always happens." Old Ferraris always appreciate a new Ferrari. Like, but the w- this is all getting a bit silly, people. Well, they will. This is stop. all getting a bit silly. Yeah, they'll they'll they will find their feet. Like I said, they're not doing that again. They're not doing another hundred grand. That car won't be one thirty in the next year or two. It just won't. Because well, a, 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 a seven-year-old 488 is still 160 mm. with good miles on it. Going back to our chat at the start of the episode with, you know, future classics, all these kind of things, people that... Is this a car, uh, 180, 190, that you buy and you just stick away? I don't know, mate. It's a computer, that car. It is a computer, so I worry computer. about sticking it away. But But... Will these recover? Will people suddenly go, oh, actually, hold on a sec. Because the one that I obviously keep staying at is the, is the Romas. Mm. The Romas continue to be in free fall. I'll tell you when they recover. When? when they stop making them. When they stop making them. Yeah. They'll recover then. I don't think they'll recover back to anywhere near where they were list. But they'll, they'll hold and trickle, which is normal. That, that's what normal mm. Ferraris normally mm. do. But obviously they've opened up to a bigger customer base now. They've got a lot more cars on offer. And obviously they play the game with the people as mm. well. Same as Porsche. Porsche do the same thing. Yeah. So uh, P- Porsche I don't know. Yeah. But you're talking different money with Porsche. That's the problem. You know, when you've got when you've got a, a lot of 911 sitting on the market mm. they're 90, 100 grand. Yeah. When you've got a lot of 296, and it's a different customer, mate. You know, the, the customer that's got 80 or 90 grand for a car, he ain't got 250 grand for a car. I don't know why, though. It's good. I, I don't sit here getting excited that I'm going to go and buy that soon. And I don't, but no one is, because there's yeah. 50 of them online. Yeah, it's hard to get It's only really been out like, a year. Yeah. And I know how good it is, but I'm not Incredible. going. I really want one. We saw the same weird, with the SF90 it? as well, remember? Yeah. Yeah. Same with, you Are know, they recovering a little bit or not? Mm, I think that's masks because yeah. of the people had to keep them and buy them for that FX. Yeah, XX Stradale thing. That XX thing. Uh, Andrew, when I went up to Alexander's to film that Bentley, he, he had one in that literally, he just, he sold it when I, whilst I was there. Um, very nice stock, but it was, it, I can't remember what he sold it at, but but a good, like a money that I thought, wow, oh, that's a lot mm. of car for that money. Mm. Yeah, it starts with a three. Um, I think I think they'll go back. I think they'll go back up because people will what realize uh, SF nineties fair because they are baby hypercars full on. And even though they are apparently pigs, if you don't use them, did you, all the batteries and the tech. Correct. You know, if you if you're using it regularly like Schmee, you're fine. But if you leave them parked up, apparently they do start to go a bit wrong. Did you see the Did you see the drag race online with that with the nine eighteen? No, SF ninety trounced it. Drive off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, people. I think that they'll make their way back up to half a mil. I think. Yeah, yeah. You think that goes back to half a mil? I think so. No, in time, in time. Will we still be alive? Yeah. Look at TDFs, mate. They're they're back up at eight eight fifty. <sighs> yeah, but no, they're more than that. Some of a million quid. I I don't think that car's special enough to do that. The SF ninety. I I can't see that going back up twenty five thirty percent. Personally, I think it might stable. I can't see it going back up near list. Maybe. Mm. It's too, okay. The jump's too big. Well, anyway, two, uh, two fantastic cars out there for, for you to go and buy, people. Uh, <laughs> a bargain 296 at European Prestige and possibly the best Panamera in Europe, which I need you to buy so that I don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, can you believe it? Huh? Right now, unbeknownst to us... The Geneva Motor Show is happening. Mate, I didn't even know it was happening. Yeah, so so just to bring everyone up to speed in case you're going, what, what are you on about? Uh, <laughs> Geneva Motor Show used to be, I would say, the biggest uh, trade, uh, not trade event, biggest um, industry event uh, each year. Like from yeah. when, I, when I started in this game, like 
bloody hell, that was the thing you had to go to. It like, was the car show to go to. It was exhausting yeah, yeah. and it was full on, but it was the the place to be from mm. a network. You would start your year, you'd secure your business, you'd meet up with all the different manufacturers, the press team, see all the new cars, everything was unveiled. Yeah. Like, if you didn't go to Geneva, you were like, that was bad for your year. Yep. <laughs> uh, and then as we've discussed over the recent years with COVID and things like that and the money and th the growth of things like Festival of Speed and Quail out in America, well, yeah, just interest had disappeared. Um, the the need for it has seemingly disappeared. Well, I think COVID killed it. COVID did kill it. COVID uh, killed and it. And just the rise of social media and things like that. People yeah. launch cars in a different way they now. They do, yeah. Uh, but it is taking place. And the really the big news out of it, it was the Renault R5 yeah. finally got unveiled. Um, unbelievably cool thing. We've spoken about it a bit before. Um, three different powertrains, I think. Two sort of urban and then one for a little bit. From 25 grand? That's what they're saying. They're from. estimating from 25 grand in the yeah. UK for the the base urban car. Yeah. So I think that means the Larry one's going to be sort of high 30s, I, I guess. I would have thought so, um, yeah. For the long range one. Um, it looks awesome, I think. They're they're doing everything right in my mind in terms of whether the inside looks really nice. That's how it should be. Um, pfft, let's wait and see. I can't work out how big it is. It um, looks big. Well, you know, we big is relative, but it, it, it's not a little tiny car anymore. But people don't make tiny cars anymore. So... No. Um, I think that's good. Yeah, good on them. I can't wait to see one. I, you know, you can go and buy an R5 Pass, which apparently is like 150 quid and gets you one of the first slots and you can get an early car. I think with all new EVs, don't buy an early one. <laughs> wait six months, just let little, some of the initial snagging well, stuff out of the way. Or but, lease one. Or lease one, yeah. yeah lease, give leasing, it back. Leasing is going to be a very good option on that car. Yeah. But yeah, I, I look forward to having a go one. I'm definitely going to try and borrow one once they're in the UK. Did you see... Go on. You've jogged my memory. Did you see Hyundai? <laughs> Hyundai, Hyundai yeah. will discontinue the i twenty N and the i thirty N. Yeah, uh, petrol ends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a shame because the N is now going to be purely electric. N yeah. performance is going to be electric in this country or worldwide. Not sure worldwide, okay. but Europe, I would think, because yeah. it's not won't be just this country. Will sure. it? It'll be Europe. Yeah. What a shame. Well, just the the next. Manufacturer replacing an iconic mark with electric only equivalents. Yeah. It's I mean, it hasn't first, got, the last. It, it hasn't left the huge legacy that N Hyundai, but it's an iconic little car for the time it was out. I mean, it's a bloody brilliant car. Both well, of them. I think, as, yeah, as we've said, even the Kona N, uh, as we've said, that those three, Kona, i20, and i30, are. Uh, not overlooked because I think people know about them. They're great car, mate. But they're unbelievably good little yeah. things. Yeah, proper yeah. little hot hatches. Yeah. That's actually, that's what we should do more often. We often say, oh, McGann and the Civic are the go-tos. I thought, yeah, we should start including that. as proper driver's hot hatches. Yeah, it's, it, it's in there, but but I think it's still third out of them sure. three on the sure. list. But, sure. but it's also a lot cheaper. Yeah, performance, well. character, reliability, yeah, yeah. all those different yeah, things. Yeah, reliability, yeah. It's a winner. Five-year warranty. Um, even though we're Desperately trying not to lose subscribers by talking about EVs. I do have to mention one. <laughs> uh, Ineos, my beloved Grenadier. Quirkiest but coolest SUV that, that lives. Um, Mr. Radcliffe. Mr. Sir. Oh, sir, Jim. Just bought Man United. I know. Or a bit of it. I know. He's got a lot is of that, money. Is that impressive? Is that cool? Well, he's leaving a legacy, isn't he? That's what he's doing it but for. He, but he owns everything. He owns the cycling team. He owns the F1 team. Yeah, yeah. He owns a football team in somewhere else. Nice. Nice, there you yeah, go. Yeah. So, you know, Which is not very good, but yeah. fine. <laughs> um, well done, sir. New, new model from them, Fusilier. No idea. Fusilier. Um, reason I'm bringing it up, interesting, because firstly, you know, the Grenadier mm. was it really, in my mind, focused on that one specific job of basically going, going to the places that no other vehicle could get you to. Like it was, it was good on the road, but really, where it was at its best was just absolutely off-road yeah, yeah like yeah. in the sahara desert yeah so i thought okay electric because the new fusilier electric i thought well that's interesting because how far can you go off-road <laughs> well he's not he's not a stupid man old jim he's absolutely that he is not they've spoken about the fact that there will definitely be a range extender version yeah um for that but also looking at i think you know various various uh what would you call it um Power sources? No, various... Uh, power trains. Power trains. There we go. So 
I like the look of it. I have to say, it's a little bit smaller, a little bit more punchy than the old Grenadier. And I just like that because they're semi, well, they are independent, but because he obviously has entered this world in a bit of a like a, here we are, boom, kind of way, he's been a bit outspoken. I saw a few quotes from him where he was just like, look, let's face it, uh, Evie's work in some environments, mm. but they're not perfect in every environment. And mm. we've got to look at different options and range extender is going to be good for us. And this is going to be the most capable EV in an off-road environment. And therefore, you know, we need to make sure it can go distances. And we're looking at other things. Like he was just very much like, we're honest. not honest. Yeah. I saw that. I think the quote that was in Top Gear or it was like, we're not going to be like a sheep and follow the masses into mm. this kind of all only yeah. BEV market. Yeah. We're going to look at all the options. And I, and I like that. And I saw Mercedes came out saying that they're also going to continue making combustion engine vehicles well into 2030s. And I, I think, you know, we speak about it and we're not going to bang on about it, but I like now that people are opening this conversation into mm. multiple options. And I just thought it was kind of cool that, that they were like not going, no, here's our electric. We're now we're gonna make an electric one. Yeah. Now. It was like, hey, here's our new model. We're gonna it's gonna be loads of varieties. We're yeah. Gonna, you know, we look look at different ways to to power this thing. Yeah. I think an, that's cool. A, a, an electric generator range extender type vehicle makes complete sense to me. Yeah, as does an extreme hybrid. Yeah. As does a one liter crazy hybrid, you know. So yeah. Just, you know, all worth looking into. But yeah, 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 cool little car. And as I say, for me, size-wise, I'd like a something a little bit smaller, punchier. The Grenadier is cool, but maybe a touch too big for me. But anyway, long and short of it. I think that is it for our car news and our episode. There were a few other things unveiled at Geneva, but nothing particularly that caught my eye. You didn't even know it was going on. So I, I, I literally yeah. didn't have a clue. Fine. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so we'll wrap up this week's episode. I'm just looking now. Do we tease... Do we tease the new format of rate my ride mm, you can if you want to just drop just a drop little little just, gem at the end for those of you that have stuck oh, with us yep. right into the end because i think some of you drift off don't but be like a, that there's a core audience right here at the end let's just let's just say rate my ride 2024 is going to take on a bit of a new meaning yeah and we want to physically is that right yeah physically rate your rides yeah by driving them. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. I'm going to come and slate it. What's <laughs> <laughs> going on here? It's, uh, yeah. So I think maybe we'll launch it next week. Maybe we'll launch that concept next week. That'd be cool. Yeah. Come okay, into fine. some of your houses or you come into us and we drive in your car. Basically, there you go. That's it. Just <laughs> I was teasing it. Tony's just revealed the whole concept. <laughs> but there you have it. We'll, we'll end things there. Um, if you've been listening to us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts a few days earlier than the old video episode, well done you. Uh, you can review, uh, rate this uh, podcast. Please do so. Uh, if you're watching us, then subscribe now. Turn on notifications. If you want to follow Tony in the meantime, he's at Tony Gravold Car Sales on most social media platforms. I'm at Seen Through Glass, and this podcast is at Behind the Glass underscore underscore podcast. We'll be back with you next week for the full explanation of all new things, rate my ride. Bye-bye. See ya.